Hello again, everybody from Arlington, Texas. This is Grant Torino coming at you again. Uh, this time we're going to talk about the upcoming fight between uh, Evander Holyfield and uh, Nikolai Valuev. Now, if you're a casual fan of the sport, you may not know who Nikolai Valuev is, uh, uh, and you may not even have been aware that there's a fight tomorrow night, but those of you who are true boxing fans have known about this fight for some time, even though there hasn't been a great deal of publicity uh, about it. I haven't even seen a video of the uh, of the press conferences or even the weigh-ins myself, and uh, I can usually find what I'm looking for on the Internet. But uh, uh, anyway, the... Uh, of course, what I'm sure everybody, uh, what's on everybody's mind is, uh, should Evander still be fighting? And, of course, in my opinion, the answer there is no. Granted, uh, Evander has has won some of his recent fights up all the way up until when he fought Sultan Ibragimov. I mean, he he lost against James Toney. He lost against Larry Donald. And, and, and that was back in 2004. That was four going on five years ago. And then, uh, you know, he came back and he beat Jeremy Bates, a uh, tough journeyman to beat. Then he beat Frezzo Kendo and, and uh, you know, Vinny Madalone and, and Lou Sav Race. Madalone is not an easy kid to beat. He's a tough kid, and, and Evander beat him. But then, uh, in my opinion, when he fought Sultan Ibragimov, he was really starting to show his age because, you know, it's the man is 46 years old now. And what the mind knows, you know, the body can't necessarily do. And this is what I think is going to be the biggest factor in the fight. Valuev uh, has only lost one fight, and that was to one of the best in the world, Ruslan Shigaev. Uh, prior to that, he, you know, he, he beat Jamil McLean. I think that before McLean's knee gave out, uh, McLean might have actually had a shot in taking down Valuev, but that's that's the way the cookie crumbles or in this case the knee crumbles uh, hopefully we'll see a rematch if uh, if McLean isn't completely shot by the time he gets gets another shot like that towards Valuev but Valuev has only lost against Ruslan Chigayev and since then he fought Bergeron you know he won he beat Lajovic and Lajovic beating Lajovic is no small matter I mean he we know about the fight Lajovic had with Lehman Brewster and that was, you know, in my opinion, a fight of the year candidate. Uh, so, Valuev, I think, is, although he, he's, he's ridiculed by a lot of people as being a circus act because he's so big, he's, he's not as bad as, as, as people make him out to be. Having said that, and my original point being, yes, Valuev's skills are light years behind uh, Evander Holyfield's, but it isn't skill that is going to be the determining factor of this fight. You know, you can have all the skill in the world in your head, but if you can't execute, then then it's it's just pointless to even having it. And I think this is what we're going to see. Valuev is going on a decade uh, younger than uh, than Holyfield. You know, Evander's 46. I believe Valuev is only 36. Uh, he he may be younger than that. He might be 33 or 34, uh, somewhere in that in that category. I don't have his age in front of me, but uh, I know that uh, he's he's around about a decade younger. That, among uh, uh, in addition to Valuev's sheer power, it's not that he's a not that he's a super powerful puncher, you know, uh, that he's got speed and and power and trajectory all perfected. He's just such a huge individual that, you know, hell, if he jabs you, he's going to knock you across the ring. I don't know if anybody saw the fight when he uh, fought Orlin Norris or uh, or uh, uh, Clifford Etienne. Hell, he knocked, knocked these guys over with, uh, you know, with jabs. So it's this is what I think is going to happen. It's, it's Evander is, he's going to know what he has to do. And a younger Evander would have been able to do what he's got to do. But this Evander isn't going to be able to do what he's got to do. And having said that, I think that what we're going to see, and uh, I give props to my fiance, she called it uh, right on the money. I think this is what's going to happen. Uh, she's predicting uh, a Valuev TKO. And uh, I... It, although I, I, I don't recall Evander ever being knocked out or even knocked down except for when he fought James Toney. Uh, 
I I think that it's it's time that he did get knocked down, and uh, and worse still because we all love the humble warrior as he was called. Uh, I think we're going to see Valuev put a put a beating on Evander Holyfield, and it's going to be long and it's going to be drawn out. And it, it, I, I can see the referee stopping this fight probably around the 10th or, or the 11th. I don't see uh, Evander hitting the canvas. I don't see him doing a, a Sam Peter and refusing to get out of his chair. You know, Evander's a warrior. He's going to come out and he's going to he's going to get er everything he's got. Unfortunately, that at this stage isn't going to be much uh, much more than a journeyman effort. And I think uh, I think Valuev is going to jab from across the ring, and he's going to land that big right hand, a la the Klitschko style. And uh, it's going to be a sad day in boxing, in my opinion. If Holyfield wins, I will not be the least bit upset at having been wrong about my prediction. I will jump up and down for joy that the man has it in him to do it. Having said that. Uh, I'm not seeing it happen. So there we go. This is Gran Torino giving you his prediction, uh, giving you my prediction for the Valuev Evander Holyfield fight uh, coming up tomorrow night, this being Friday. And uh, we'll catch you again for the next big fight coming up. And we're out. See you later.